Okay guys, according to some of my YouTube subscribers, the best software developers on earth are software developers that smoke weed. So what I've done is I put a little pot leaf down into my diagram right here so that we can learn how map works like the best software developers ever. And the most important thing to really realize about the map array helper method is that simply it returns a brand new array. In order to demonstrate this, I've created a nice little diagram right here, a nice little story almost to explain it. So let's just say we've built a factory right here don't mind the pot leaf. I'm actually just going to delete the pot leaf so that we don't get distracted. But imagine that we have a factory for arrays. One array goes in and a brand new array comes out. We can program this factory to do whatever we want. We can program it to add maybe a number to it. We could divide a number by two. But let's just say we program our mysterious factory map array helper here in order to just add each element to the array. So what's gonna happen is this array is going to go in and this mysterious factory is just going to take each element in this array, add two to it, and then we will get a brand new array. So we'll go three, obviously adding two is going to give us three here. So we're going to get three for each of these. And what's going to happen is that it's going to return a brand new array. And that is the whole entire idea behind map. You need to know the difference between map and for each and a lot of these other array methods. And just knowing that it returns a brand new array is going to be absolutely pivotal and will set you apart from other software developers. But let's not stop there. Let's just talk about the actual array helper method itself. So in our factory example, this is going to be our array before it actually goes into the factory. And this actual map here is going to be the factory itself. This is where everything is going to be added. And in here, I've actually got a one. So let's go ahead and change this to a two. And what's going to happen is that this actual map function is going to perform all of those actions on the array. All of the iteration is going to go on within this actual map function. And what is going to be returned is going to be a new array. And after we get done with this array right here, say for example, we have this one. Uh, so if we just add two to it, it's going to return a new array with a three, a four, a five, a six, and then a seven. And that is going to be the actual amount of the let new array. So after we get done, let new array is going to equal this amount right here. And once again, just remember, it returns a new array. This is going to be very important to you and your life as a JavaScript developer, but we can't stop there. We need to do a couple practice rounds in order to fully comprehend how this actually works. So in order to understand maps at a fundamental level, it's important to just create a for loop that mimics a map. And what we're going to do is we are just going to create literally the simplest array that we possibly can just populate it with numbers you can put strings in here if you want to but i'm just going to make it with strings or uh, numbers and then we're going to create an empty array now with regular for loops remember that if you are going to return an array with a for loop you actually have to create that array and what we're going to do next is we are going to create our for loop we will have just your typical uh, comparison operator with the link right here and then we will have a plus plus then what we're going to do pay attention to this part because this is where all the magic is going to happen we are going to actually push the new numbers after we times them by two and you can times them by whatever you're, you want to. I'm going to double the numbers in this case, but we're going to actually times them. And then we are going to push them into the brand new array so that when we actually get back the array right here, when we get back our new array that we actually created, you can see that we have a brand new array that is not equivalent to the old array that we had before here. So if I go into here and you just want to make sure that we are not actually manipulating our pre previous array, you can see we have two brand new arrays. But let's actually create the map. We've built up here. Now we can actually start going for what we are after, and that is the actual map. So what we're going to do is let's just create an actual new variable here. We will assign it the name doubled and then we will go here and here is where we're going to actually map over our numbers and when we map over our numbers we can use since we only have one actual parameter we can just use an arrow function then we're going to go down here and just times it by 
too. And as you can see, this looks way better compared to the actual for loop. We don't actually have to create a new array. We don't have to create a double numbered. Everything is going to be done for us. And if you look here in the console log, it should be exactly the same. So we'll go doubled. And if we log doubled, it is going to be a brand new array. And our previous numbers, as you can see here, should not be manipulated. Yes, our previous array is not manipulated and we have a brand new array, but this isn't good enough. Let's actually consider a more realistic, more real life scenario where we have a array of objects. So once again, I went a little crazy on the Red Bulls last weekend. Uh, I was on a huge stint where I wasn't drinking a lot of coffee, but I went a little crazy on the Red Bulls. So I'm going to make a actual array of Red Bulls here and we're going to go cranberry. And let's just say, for instance, that we want to find the volume of our Red Bulls. Instead of cleaning up our Red Bulls like we did before, we are going to actually go into here and we are going to find the volume of our Red Bulls. Now, this example doesn't really matter and it's kind of just a silly example, but, but this is going to show you how to actually pluck values out of an object inside of an array. So we're gonna go here. This is going to be our coconut flavor. We will have a radius of, let's say one, and then we will have a height of seven. So let's just say a height of seven, and this array looks good right here. Next thing that we're gonna do, as we always do, we're going to put our map inside of a actual variable, and I'll call this the Red Bull volume right here. And we can have, the red bulls so we'll have red bulls and then we'll have our map and we will have the singular form of red bull right here and within this actual red bull we can just use an arrow function remember because with arrow functions we only need one parameter then we can go in here and we can multiply our red bull radius by our red bull height so we're going to go red bull dot radius times red bull dot height and we can go ahead down here and we can console log it and we should get our values that we want. So we'll go Red Bull volume. So Red Bull and it's going to return a brand new array. And I need to go up here, I actually spelt this wrong. So we go down here and we log our values. And as you can see, it is multiplied our radius times our height. And we have our volumes four and seven within our actual arrays. Anyways, that's going to be the video for today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, make sure to smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.